Our next presenter has been a crusader for change, just like many of you. A few years ago, she rallied her neighbors in the 4th District of Maryland to challenge a guy who was representing them badly in Congress. And she won. Now she has taken her crusade for change into the Congress, where she's focused on improving the lives of working families. Please, please welcome Congresswoman Donna Edwards. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. So I came out this evening and I thought I had talked to Roger and Bob and I really wanted to introduce Leo Gerard, my hero. I love you, man. I love you. And then they said no. And then I said, well, can I introduce my good friend, my mentor, my shiro, Marge Tabankin? And they said no. <laughs> and then they said, well, we want you to do another introduction. And I thought about that, and then I said, well, okay, I guess so. Well, it turns out that I have the particular responsibility of introducing our next award winner. And um, I will just say that the award, the Paul and Sheila Wellstone uh, Citizenship, uh, Citizen Leadership Award is one that is really special to me. I had, like many of you, worked on a lot of political campaigns since I was a teenager, but it wasn't until I heard Paul Wellstone that I wrote the first check that I ever wrote to any political candidate, and it was the $50 that was the best $50 I ever spent on Paul Wellstone. And then when they came to Washington and I got to know and meet and work with Paul and Sheila Wellstone, uh, it was amazing. And even to this day in the Congress, there are so many times when I ask myself, what would Paul Wellstone do? And there are other times when I say, and what would Sheila say about it? <laughs> and so this evening, it really does give me a great pleasure to present a, an award that's uh, in honor of two people whose passion and vision and leadership and energy served us all well and continues to do so. And Reverend Dr. William Barber. Now, I want to tell you another reason I was very excited to do this this evening, because Reverend Dr. Barber, now I do represent the 4th Congressional District of Maryland, but I am from Yanceyville in Caswell County, North Carolina. And so as a native North Carolinian, I was really proud when I saw, like many of you did, his local and his national leadership and the way that he organized. And he's such a humble man. He says, you know what? I didn't do all of that. I had people around me. But that's what a good organizer says. I know Leo knows that. But he organized them in the fight on voting rights and fair redistricting and health care reform and labor and workers' rights, immigrant rights and ed education reform. He's been the leader of the Moral Monday movement. And you know what? He reminded me it is indeed a movement. And it's a movement that, you know, is really designed to fight the control of the Republican-led legislature in North Carolina, to reorient it back to the people of North Carolina. And this movement has helped to highlight the public policy decisions that are being made by the crazies that are hurting the poor and the women and children and the members of the LGBT community, the elderly and our veterans. Dr. Barber is leading the charge in North Carolina, but we are feeling the charge all across this country. <laughs> Dr. Barber's commitment to service and improving the lives of those around him are really second to none. And I am really so inspired by him. And just to tell you what a great organizer he is, he got me to agree just standing over there that I come to North Carolina in February, and I'm going to do that. Right. 
So tonight, I am so pleased and proud to present to now my favorite North Carolinian, the Paul Wellstone Citizenship Leader Leadership Award to Reverend Dr. William Barber. Please take a look at the video. On a revolution. <laughs> we give honor to God tonight and thank him for his spirit and his strength to do the work that has assigned our hands and the moments of life that we have. Let me thank also our representative, my homegirl, uh, for being so gracious tonight to Roger and Robert. We thank you and the sponsors to my friends Rob Schofield and Chris Fitzsimon who put out North Carolina Policy Watch and have helped bring our work to your attention, to my son uh, who's here tonight with me who is uh, soon to be, he's an environmental physicist and wants to major in environmental policy law. I accept this prestigious award on behalf of the hundreds of thousands of people in North Carolina who have been inspired and energized by our Moral Monday Forward Together movement. Many of them, some of them are here tonight. <laughs> this award doesn't belong to me. It belongs to all of the civil disobedient, civilly disobedient, <laughs> black and white, LGBT, straight, Latino, civil rights veterans, labor rights advocates, poor, wealthy, people of faith, clergy, professors, doctors, students and teachers, young people in North Carolina who have decided to stand up and declare forward together, not one step back. We have, 
We have decided to do this against the temporary tide of immoral and extreme public policy and the public policy makers. It belongs to our team of local presidents of the NAACP, members of our executive committee, our staff, our team of lawyers, and one of our lead counsel, the Advancement Project, and our social media and video gurus like Fusion Films and Story of America. And it belongs to the more than 160 coalition partners representing more than 2 million North Carolinians who've been working together in the Forward Together People's Assembly movement for seven years, building a 21st century model of fusion politics in the South. We believe that we are in the middle of a third reconstruction, a time of great transformation. We believe the forces of extremism and regressivism understand that a future is coming that, they ca that cannot be denied. We believe that in this moment, in order to change the nation and prepare for the future, we need state-based movements rooted in our deepest constitutional, moral, and religious values that are decidedly anti-racist and anti-poverty that have national implications. Transformative movements always begin from Montgomery up, from Selma up, from Raleigh up, which is why, which is why 50 years ago, Dr. King's instructions were so clear to the devotees of civil rights. He said, if you want a new America, don't necessarily come back to Washington, but go back to Mississippi, go back to Alabama, go back to North Carolina, and build state movements that challenge the injustices in state capitals that have national implication. We believe we must have movements that are not transactional but transformative, where people come together and challenge the policies of extremism in the courtroom, the legislature, the social media, ballot box, and even with civil disobedience. We believe there must be a direct challenge to the so-called moral framework of extremism paid for by Tea Party and Coke money and Art Pope money in New York and New North Carolina and the ultra-conservative moral framework that says moral issues are limited to praying in the schools and abortion rights and homosexuality. We believe this is both hypocritical and heretical. We believe there must be a direct challenge to this limitation we must declare without retreat that our constitutional values, establishing justice, promoting the general welfare, the common good, the good of the whole, must be the critique and at the center of every public policy decision. And the moral values of doing justice and loving mercy and caring for the least of these and lifting the poor and healing the sick and welcoming the stranger and uplifting children and declaring as the prophets of old said, woe unto those who legislate evil and rob the poor of their rights. Or to say like Jesus said, when I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was sick, did you visit me? This framework must be at the center of our public policy life because within this framework, economic sustainability is a moral issue. Budgets are moral issues. Health care is a moral issue. Living wages is a moral issue. Voting rights is a moral issue. Rights of our immigrants, friends, are moral issues. Women's rights is a moral issue. Treating our LGBT friends with respect and dignity and not hate and disdain is a moral issue. So, we say to our progressive and liberal friends, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. It was on the, in the framework of moral issues that we changed this country in the first reconstruction in the 1800s and in the second reconstruction in the 1960s. And we say to those who have for too long tried to hijack and hold hostage the moral and values debate in this country, particularly in the South, that day is over. That day is over. Your actions have been weighed in the balance. We say to the so-called Christian right that is often so wrong, your actions have been weighed in the balance. We love you, but you are not the true conservatives. We are because we want to conserve the essence of faith, and that is love and justice and righteousness and mercy. Your 
We love you, but we must tell you that your limited view of morality have been found wanting because they are morally indefensible, constitutionally inconsistent, and economically insane. So if you want a moral debate in, in America, if you want a moral debate in America, bring it on. We are ready for it. Bring it on. Bring it on. And finally, and finally, we have found in North Carolina that when you build from the ground up a state-based movement with national implication, when we found that when we become a catalyst for discourse, moral discourse that is not rooted in the limited language of liberal versus conservative or Democrat versus Republican, but instead the moral language of what is moral versus immoral, what is extreme versus what is constitutional and just, it brings people together. It creates a new fusion politics. It binds our hearts together it, in ways that are unmistakably powerful. It brings hope. And so I took a moment from the front line to come and accept this award on behalf of all those in the Moral Monday movement. 941 have been arrested. Never before have that many people been arrested challenging the actions, the immoral actions of a state capitol. They said when 17 of us got arrested on April 29th, it wouldn't make a difference. But 30 weeks later, nearly 1,000 have been arrested, thousands have joined, over 1 million hits on social media. Every week, there's another rally in North Carolina. Even out in the mountains, there are rallies, and down east, there are rallies, and in the middle of North Carolina, there are rallies. The governor called us outsiders, but now the governor who was at 60% in the polls when we started is now under 30%. The extreme members of the legislature called us morons and used the tactic of the Mississippi Sovereign Commission with one of their policy groups, Civitas, and put our names and our addresses all over the internet. They were around 40% when we started, but now they're under 19%. Mara Monday is polling among all North Carolinians at over 48%. One writer said that our governor is the 18th worst governor in the country, and Marl Monday is one of the top 40 movements in the world. And it's growing every day. And so we are making a call tonight. Tonight, we've built from the ground up, but tonight, we want you to join us on February the 8th. All roads lead to North Carolina. Just like they announced for us to come to Selma in the 1960s, we're asking you to join us for a mass moral march on Raleigh February the 8th to send a signal throughout this state and out this country that we are not going backwards. We want you to come and be there with us. Come on down and let's send a signal across the South that a new day is here, a new day of voting, a new day of working together, a new day of standing together, a new day of changing things together. There may be a temporary anomaly in North Carolina, but when the people come together, we have never been defeated. And as we sing at every Moral Monday, if we stay together and stand together, I've got a feeling, I've got a real good feeling that everything is going to be all right. Come on down, let's change this nation. <laughs>